Hey everybody, this is Dr. Lori Langdon, board certified pediatrician, mom to six and grandmother to two with I hope what is a simplified explanation for some updates in asthma management. Now these updates a little bit sneaked up on me because they came out around 2020 based on some expert panel recommendations and then the American Academy of Pediatrics adopted them or at least the ones of the guidelines that applied to kids. And so I am going to try to simplify this and, and it, that's how I often think of things and then get more specific depending on the scenario. But here's the rough plot line. I have always taught parents that there are two parts to asthma, the chronic inflammation, you know, along the lining of the airways, and then that tight squeeze or bronchoconstriction of those uh, circular smooth muscles around the airways. And there were two therapies, steroids to reduce the inflammation in the lining and bronchodilators or openers to relax those tight squeezy uh, muscles around the airways. And so historically, the steroids, if inhaled, could be a controller and you use those regularly, preventively, and always, not just when you're sick. This is the old thinking. And then you use the emergency medicine, your rescue inhaler, only when you're sick. So steroids all the time is controller, bronchodilators only when sick. And that was absolutely the basis of how we thought about asthma uh, and how we diagnosed it as far as the level of severity determined how much of those steroids we used, basically. And so just the way of thinking has changed with these new guidelines. And again, a lot of us who are old dogs, it's hard to learn new tricks, but we are trying. And I had started getting some inkling of this through uh, kids who were seeing a pediatric pulmonologist and they would come back on these new regimens. So what I want to teach you guys about are some of the updates, particularly something called SMART therapy. And that is same maintenance as rescue therapy. This is mind-blowing. Another smaller mind-blowing thing is that we used to say in health steroids only worked if you use them faithfully. And now it's actually considered reasonable and a good idea for some not severe level kids, but some of the, maybe the very mildest persistent asthmatics to use the inhaled corticosteroids for a bout of illness. Trying to avoid oral steroids, of course, and then if they're relatively mild, persistent, only using them when they're sick, which is when the only time they're gonna flare up. And then they would also add in their uh, rescue inhaler, their emergency use bronchodilator. Now, when I say a rescue inhaler, we're generally referring to a SABA SABA, short acting beta agonist, okay? And that's gonna matter in a minute because we're gonna drop that short acting beta agonist when we move up to the SMART therapy. So remember with me, if you will, the levels of diagnosis. There's mild intermittent. Those kids only need to use an inhaler rarely, a couple times a year maybe. They don't go to the hospital. They're not, not up at night coughing. They're not having symptoms more than twice a week. They don't run out of their prescription for their inhaler constantly because they rarely need it. So they are mild and only intermittent. They don't have to be on a controller every day. And then when we go up to mild persistent, those kids do need to be on an inhaled steroid, like we were saying, most of the time every day or maybe in very mild cases only when sick. Now, when that's not working, when a relatively low to medium dose of an inhaled corticosteroid isn't controlling their symptoms, then we move up to the diagnosis of moderate persistent and also combination therapy, which is an inhaled corticosteroid, and there are varied doses throughout this, and an inhaled, all mixed together, long-acting beta agonist, or LABA, and the one that's used is Formoterol. That's our favorite for this new SMART therapy. So this is mind-blowing, but SMART therapy means you take your controller every day. This is for moderate and severe persistence. The level of dosing may depend on the severity, but it's always a combination steroid and long-acting bronchodilator. But then when you get sick, you keep taking, you know, whatever your, your, your prescription is, one inhalation twice a day or two inhalations twice a day or whatever it is. But you use that exact same inhaler when you're sick more frequently to actually treat the symptoms. Because this formoterol is not only a long-acting beta agonist, the thing that relaxes the tight and smooth muscles around the airways, it also kicks in quickly. So it's a quick it starts soon and lasts long, which is fantastic. And so SMART, same maintenance, that Advair, that Simbacort with the combination of the steroid and the bronchodilator, 
as rescue therapy. So you no longer have need of your albuterol inhaler, your short acting beta agonist. This makes, this sounds complicated, but it's not as complicated as, I'm, as it sounds. What I'm trying to say is those kids who are moderate persistence or more, it's actually simplified their therapy because they now only need one inhaler, that combo inhaler. Now, I have found that it's not only hard for me as a pediatrician to relearn this new concept and combo and smart therapy, it's hard on parents too. So they'll text me and ask or, or contact me and ask, well, how often do I need to use your albuterol inhaler? And I'll say, no, 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 that's what I'm saying. Just remember the albuterol part, the bronchodilator part, it's covered by this combination inhaler. Your kid only has to use one inhaler for the controller and the rescue. Now, one consequence of this is that the insurance companies need to figure out this too, because sometimes they'll only pay for one exact inhaler, just enough for the two puffs twice a day or whatever it is, and then they're using extra if they have a, a bout of illness. So they, the insurance companies need to be willing to fill that more frequently if needed. And the cool part is, as guidelines should be, these guidelines are based on lots of studies that found uh, better control, fewer hospitalizations, just better outcomes all the way around with this new smart therapy. So even though it's hard for us to wrap our brain around brand new guidelines, uh, and actually these were a few years old, but I'm just updating you now. Uh, when we've thought about this, our whole lives as two separate categories, controller and rescue. Now these things are merging and the combination controller and rescue can be used for both maintenance and emergencies. That's pretty cool. I hope this helped and didn't confuse you. Please feel free to ask me questions, leave questions here, uh, and just let me know if you want me to do more on asthma or if you have any suggestions of additional educational videos. And as always, please like and share and subscribe. Thanks.